Good day. This is 3 to 1 exam. You are welcome to the subject economics. And the topic we're looking into today is international trade. International trade. And we'll be looking at uh, what students are expected to know in this particular topic, international trade. At the end of this topic, candidates should be able to know the following outlines. Number one, candidates should be able to know the main and basis of international trade. Number two, candidates should be able to differentiate between absolute and comparative advantages. Absolute and comparative advantages. And candidates should also be able to distinguish between balance of trade and balance of payment and their corrective measures. Candidates should be able to, dis uh, to distinguish between balance of trade and balance of payment and their corrective measures. Candidates should be able to highlight the problem of balance of payments and their corrective measures. Ability to highlight the problems of balance of payment and their corrective measures. Students should be able to examine the composition and the direction of Nigeria's foreign trade the composition and the direction of Nigerian foreign trade. What are those particular commodities that government is involved in, in terms of international trade? Are they primary secondary goods or electrical or industrial? Now, students should be able to identify the types of exchange rates. Students should be able to identify the types of exchange rates. Now, we'll be looking at the next one, which is the meaning and basis for international trade. Of course, we know that we have two types of trade. The very first one is the domestic trade, and the second one is the international trade. But our concentration and our lecture for today is international trade. Types of trade, we have the domestic We have number one is domestic. Domestic trade. And number two, international trade. Okay? But today we are looking at international trade. What is international trade? From the definition, it is the exchange of goods and services between two or more countries. It is the exchange of goods and services between two or more countries. When there is, in monetarily, you know, when there is a monetary value that is backing it up, it is an international trade. International trade is defined. is defined as the exchange of goods and services between two or more countries. That is international trade, or a trade between one particular country or the other across the international borders. A trade a trade between one country or, and the other across international border. Okay? Now, we say that there are types of trades. We have the domestic trade and international trade. Today, we are looking at international trade. 
and we have been able to defend international trade, say it's defined as the exchange of goods and services between two or more countries, or it's a trade between one country and the other across international borders. Now, we're going to be looking at the theory of international trade. The theory of international trade. The theory of international trade is being compounded, is propounded by David Ricardo in the 19th century from the law of comparative cost advantage. Now, that is what the theory of international trade is talking about. We say the theory of international trade The theory of international trade is propounded by David Ricardo in the 19th century. using the comparative cost advantage. Comparative cost advantage. Now, the comparative cost advantage is a measure that tries to bring out the lower cost of opportunity in producing a particular commodity in which a particular country has a benefit in, comparing to the higher rate or disadvantage that it will have in producing another commodity where the comparative advantage will be high. Now, comparative advantage helps a country to know a particular commodity that it needs to focus its attention its resources into in producing at a lower cost and a maximum output. That means minimum input and getting a maximum output. That is what all comparative cost advantage is talking about that uh, David, Ricard David Ricardo has been able to bring to us. The theory of international trade is propounded by David Ricardo in the 19th century using the comparative cost uh, advantage. Now, we are going to be looking at the basis for international trade. Now, in looking at the basis, of, the basis for international trade, we'll be looking at some of the, of the reasons. Number one is uneven distribution of natural resources. Why do we now experience or why do we have international trade? We have an international trade because every of the resources in all over the six continents of the world is not found all over the world at a uniform or at an even you know, capacity. So there are some countries that are at an advantage in terms of natural resources, other countries are at an advantage in terms of technological resource, uh, development. Some other countries are at an advantage in terms of industrial development. And some other countries are at an advantage in terms of human capacity. So you can see that in one way or the other, all the countries need themselves in order to actualize self goals and objectives. So one of those particular points is uneven distribution of natural, res natural resources. Number two is differences in climatic conditions. One of the basis for international trade is the different climatic conditions. The climatic condition determines the kind of resources that is being grown, especially like agriculture. In Europe, we have the temperate condition. You know? In Africa, we have the equatorial, especially in the sub-Saharan region, we have the equatorial um, uh, climate, you know, where there, there, there is uh, two seasons, the dry season and the rainy season. But if you go to Europe, you have four different seasons. And you have the type of crops that suit the, you know, in, in the cultivation of, this, of these different areas. So if you look at it, that means there will come a time when a particular country will want to lean on the other for, you know, for, for, for production processes. Differences in technology. There's also, as a result of difference in technology, we have some countries that are highly industrialized, technologically advanced. And we have other countries that are not technologically advanced. So if you are not technologically advanced, there must be a bridge. There must be a, a point of break-even. 
And what is the particular point of break-even? Where you will now need the services of those particular country that has advanced technologically to make you to also follow suit. Now, that is one of the areas where you will need international trade. Then differences in skill acquisition. There are some countries that are, are, that are skillfully, uh, you know, uh, uh, gifted, skillfully, they are very skillful in terms of production, technologically, industrially, especially if you go to countries like Japan, uh, China, you know, America. All these are countries that are industrially and technologically advanced. So you can definitely agree with me that such acquisition of skills in this particular country, you will need to have their own import into your own country so as to teach you those particular things they've learned in order to advance in your own technological uh, you know, um, development. Now, the next one is expansion for the efficient use of natural resources. Expansion for the efficient use of natural resources. International trade also helps in the efficient use of natural resources and being expanded. It's expansion. It has to be expanded. And in this doing, you need the services of other countries to pivot you to get to that particular level. We have differences in the efficient use to natural resources. There are differences in the efficient use to natural resources. Differences. So we need all this. Every country has efficiency, efficiency in, the, in the use of its natural resources. And another basis for international trade is the desire for an improved standard of living. And we said this earlier on, and we're going to still say it again. Standard of living is very pivot in every life. Why do you think people want to travel out of Africa and move to developed countries where things are easily you know, accessible? We have the healthcare is easily accessible. Job opportunity is not really as difficult as it is in your country. And then you have uh, social infrastructure facilities are easily accessible. Good road network, electric, you know, un uninterrupted power supply. And then you have a uh, good healthcare services, everything. When you have this, definitely those are the HDIs, Human Development Index, that always improve on your standard of living. So the desire to improve in standard of living is one of the pivot points or reasons why we have uh, international trade. Different in taste and fashion. They say varieties, they say the spice of life. So you will definitely, if you operate on a minute system of economic, develop, economic development, Obviously, you will not be able to get everything that you want. So monocultural or monoeconomic system. So you will definitely need to, you know, go beyond and get other countries that are involved in other system of cultivation, other system of creativity, other system of development and, uh, you know, uh, and production so as to get what they have, get it to where what you have, and then release it. Therefore, there's going to be varieties. We have difference in the efficient use of natural resources. We have desire to improve of standard of living and then differences in taste and faction. These are the basis for international trade. These are the basis for international trade. And the next one we'll be looking at is advantages of international trade. Of course, international trade has an advantage. It also has its disadvantage. But we'll be looking at the advantage of international trade. And number one advantage of international trade is, number one, is a source of uh, revenue. Source of revenue. International trade is a source of revenue. And we all know that crude oil amounts to over 90% of our country's GDP. That is exported. If, we had, if, had, if there was no international trade, then what, how do we now get our own source of revenue? We say crude oil amount about 90% of the country GNP. So that is of the country's GNP. source of revenue. Then number two is that it helps to improve or encourage economic development. It helps to encourage, encourage economic uh, growth and development.
Number three, 